Hello everybody and welcome to another expanded guide. Today we're going to be talking about Ashcan Pete, uh, or as Travis put him in the uh, online, as Duke Expanded Guide. When I <laughs> when I searched Ashcan Expanded Guide, I was like, oh, something's not right here. I found the Ashcan New Player Guide. I opened that one up because I just instinctively was like, ah, oh, here says Ashcan, this has got to be the link. And I was like, something's not right here. There's so much writing in the description and not just a list of cards. So this is we're going to refer to Ashcan Pete probably as Duke for the rest of the uh, video because Duke is why you're playing this character. Um, Duke is the dog. Ashcan's ability is you being with Duke in play, and Duke is an action exhaust fight. You get you fight with a base skill of four fist, and this attack deals plus one damage. He also has the action exhaust him and investigate. You investigate with a base skill of four. And you may move to a connecting location immediately before investigating with this effect. He soaks for 2 and 3, while Ashcan soaks for 6 and 5. Ashcan also has the ability, discard a card from your hand to ready an asset you control, limit once per round. So it's a pretty simple, straightforward gameplay loop, where you're going to use Duke, discard a card from your hand to ready Duke, and then use Duke again on your turn. It's because of this that makes Ashcan such a flexible investigator in addition to his survivor card pool, but also his five level zero cards because he's the Dun he's from Dunwich, so he gets the five level zero deck building options. Um, his signature weakness is exhaust all assets you control and put racked by nightmares into play in your threat area. Assets you control cannot ready and as a double action you discard racked by nightmares. So it's like it's a pretty soft personal weakness. I know that someone out there might try to tell you that they were once absolutely ruined by Racked by Nightmares. But they're just not telling you the 99 other times where it kind of just was like a double action for your turn. It's a pretty soft basic weakness. A signature weakness, rather. I mean, it feels to me like a basic weakness. That's how, uh, how it is there. Um, looking at uh, Pete's stat line, he has 4 2 2 3. So, uh, his two book and his two fist are boosted by his two use action for Duke that he gets each turn. But otherwise, he has really nice, um, de uh, defensive stats in addition to his activatable offensive stats, which just further works for his flexibility. If we look at his strengths and weaknesses, uh, his strengths is that he is very low to the ground, and that's not just because, you know, he's a bloodhound. Um, but that means that he can, like, start running immediately because on your first act like your first turn you could do some setup but also still just investigate with duke and like you know just hit the ground running he's very flexible as well as i was talking about he can play both he can he, he's kind of like built to be the flex like in just his entire kit uh you can obviously build to one way or the other because even though he has two in those stats he's a survivor which means like things like old key ring and fire axe exist but Duke is also just very good at, like, making it so that you can kind of flex. And then he also uh, has uh, built-in discard synergies, which are really cool and a big part of the class that we're going to get to here. His weaknesses is the mech card pool, because Survivor 05 is really just Survivor 03. They decided to do some, like, high-level Survivor cards and then just, like, decided to stop again. <laughs> um, so it's really just the 0-3. to three. Uh, and this means that his scaling is subpar. So scaling is like the, he's really good at level zero. And then as the scenarios demand more, like for example, a five shroud location or an enemy with five attack, Duke is going to start falling behind while other investigators with their card pools and their abilities are likely going to be able to keep up, keep up with it better than Ashcan can. It doesn't mean that, uh, Duke and Ashcan are useless in the final part of a scenario. It's just that you're going to have to work a little bit harder than you would have to in the earlier scenarios. And that's Ashcan. Does anyone else have anything they want to add to this guy, or is that pretty good? No, it's just him. Sweet. Yeah, it's Ashcan. Uh, so, Travis, with that, uh, why don't you take on the, the core set here? Okay, well, this is... Uh... Just a bunch of good red cards and skill cards, really. Mm -hmm. uh, Rabbit's Foot is nice to draw the occasional card. You do need card draw. It's a little bit higher value for Duke than for other red some other red investigators. 
like Wendy, you discard cards for abilities, so you need a constant flow of them to uh, keep up. Of course, you get your one for, per turn for free, which is enough to sate Duke's Hunger, but um, if you're going to play other cards, you need to find other ways to get cards. So, Kind of distraction. Um, here's for good symbols. You're going to be discarding a lot of cards instead of playing them and just using Duke for things, as well as committing skills to tests for the most part. So you probably actually have the five resources to play this when you need it. Look what I found here investigating with four book, getting two clues on the off chance you fail is pretty good and lucky because it's, I mean, like the rest of these cards here, including lucky are just staples. So go, go check that out, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> um, the skills, obviously they're all here too, because of the way Pete's stat line works. Like you can run them all. <laughs> like there's a lot of skill decks that we're going to see, like skills that you can just put them all in because they replace themselves but they also can just if you don't need them feed them to the dog your drafts right we'll, we'll go by set on this one because they're pretty short sure uh we got scavenging here do having four book for like two investigations per turn if that's what you want to be doing unless you trigger scavenging pretty consistently mm -hmm. um let's get back cards it's, it's basically just a form of card draw again repeatable card draw to feed duke or to commit icons to be able to actually succeed your test, especially later into the campaigns. Upgrade Lucky draws your card. Cards replace themselves are good here. Will this survive? Really nice for Duke. Um, if you're going to do three things in a turn, this basically lets you do three things for the cost of like one card instead of the cost of three cards if you had to commit cards to pass those tests. yeah. Um, great card for Duke. We have a couple off-color cards here as well. Magnifying Glass, um, great hand slot because you get plus one book while investigating that counts while you are investigating with duke so you can have five book or six if you have two magnifying glasses mm -hmm. and drawn to the flame as well um lets you get sort of clues on your if you don't have the option to use duke or on very high shroud locations and ash can has four brain three foot which makes him pretty strong against the encounter deck yeah, yeah. uh brin yeah 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 youtube brin's here so <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll throw Dunnage to you, Bryn. All right. Well, we got uh, we got Justin's boyfriend. He's good. Um, also, has the cool upside of like his upgraded one gives you plus one to your defensive numbers. So uh, you're playing with like a four and a five. It's really good. Uh, we got a newspaper. We need something to uh, have Duke go fetch. Mm -hmm. So you know, newspaper gives you plus. Two while you're investigating. It works with Duke because Duke is just an investigate action, putting you up to a much more comfortable six. Dark Horse. It's not that hard to be out of money, especially when you've just paid three to put a condition into play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, plus one to all your numbers is just kind of cool. You basically get to play Pete as though he has fives. We got a flare. You can use this to... Uh, you can use this to fight. It's a strong, op strongish option. I mean, like you still only fight at four because uh, dogs don't uh, dogs don't use players no, very. Doesn't good. have thumbs. No, no thumbs. You see, bit of a problem. However, you can also use this to go looking for an ally from someone's deck, possibly your own. If maybe Duke has died and you've reshuffled your deck, you could uh, try to fish him out of there. Mm -hmm. We got Relic Hunter and Charisma. They're just good. Yeah. They're in the they're in the thing. We got Scrapper. Uh, this one lets you spend your money to be better at either punch or foot. You can use this to be better at fighting with Duke if that's the thing you want to use Duke for. And you can also use it to be better at evading if you have to. Oh, we've got Survival. In. This card, I actually don't know what it is. So you're <laughs> learning this one with me. This, if this test is successful, evasion will turn. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one's just uh, this one's just like the other red one that does this. Mm -hmm. uh, you evade for two more foot, and you, you do it better. Get a little bit more efficiency out of this. Yeah. Once you move to a connecting location, and then you can just walk right back in with Duke. Yeah, and <laughs> fight him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You want to take uh, the last survivor in the off-color, right. too. 
Uh, we got Stroke of Luck, which is uh, honestly not a very good card most of the time. However, in Duke's unique circumstances, you are often testing bad numbers against very hard ones, and you have XP that you have nothing to do with into that, the back half of a campaign. So you can use this to make critical tests succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you draw the red token, nothing can help you then. Uh, we, and we've got some cool off-class options here. We've got Liquid Courage, which, you know, Pete's really good at drinking. Duke, not so much. Dogs are bad at that. Uh, both, like, the no thumbs and the liver is not good at it. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a solid support option because it does help you keep not only yourself alive, but everybody else as well. The Ritual Candles, which are just plain efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, it basically makes all the symbol tokens in the bag have a difficulty one smaller for the cost of your hand slot, which you might not be using anyway. And preposterous sketches, which draws you cards, which are important because Duke gets tired without treats. Yeah. So you got to go find them. Yeah, that, that dog ain't performing for free. No. He will no once. Sir. He will once. <laughs> yeah, till he realizes there's no food in him. Yeah. Now, now you might be wondering, like, we're not really talking about like a lot of synergies <laughs> with Ash Can P, and it's kind of just because. Um, Ash Pete is just like he just goes like a lot of these cards are gonna be like yeah this card does this thing and it also can ready Duke and that's gonna kind of hold true as we get through a bunch of these uh, resourceful this is uh, we're in Path to Carcosa now resourceful it's a staple it's just getting cards back that are good like a lucky or a look what I found uh, just very nice there with um, all survivor cards we have Calling in Favors, which is uh, kind of actually kind of cute <laughs> with Ash Can Feet, where you can return, like, you can put a bunch of damage and horror on Duke and then return him to your hand and, like, maybe play another ally from your deck for cheaper, um, which is kind of nice. <laughs> kind of a little bit cheeky. I've, uh, honestly, I'm surprised that I've never seen it happen, but I, I like Travis's inclusion here of doing that with Duke. That can be pretty fun. Yeah, it's also like a weird smobile way to ready him. Like yeah, in, in yeah, action. it is. It's kind of cool. Uh, Madame LeBranche, she uh, is like, I think really good in Ash Can Pete. Like she's good in Dark Horse decks, but I think like if you're playing like a Dark Horse Ash Can Pete deck, she is like phenomenal. But even in Ash Can Pete, she can represent cards. Uh, like her card ability is going to probably trigger more than you think in an Ash Can Pete deck, especially if we're being aggressive about readying Duke. So if you want to be playing Ash Can Pete, you want to be looking at Madame LeBranche for that. Fight or Flight, it's the amount of horror on you. You get plus X fist and plus X foot. It's until the end of the round you get it, which means that you and Duke are going to be fighting in tandem fight or flight style. It, sound, it sounds like a pretty cool scene in a movie, so you should try it out sometime. Uh, these four skills here are the desperate skills. Uh, they're all included here because Ashcan can actually take use of them pretty reliably in comparison to a lot of other investigators because he has a very low starting amount of sanity. Uh, these basically will give you four of a symbol uh, and you can only commit if you have three or fewer remaining sanity. And they also have that plus side in Ashcan, Pete, where if you are not at the point where you can play these cards, uh, you can give them as treats to Duke to, you know use plucky is a composure uh it's uh non-direct damage non-direct horror must be assigned to it before it can be assigned to your investigator card which is pretty nice with uh you know you kind of have some built-in horror soak with duke the dog and you can spend resources to book uh, push up your book and your brain uh going through carcosa we still got more in carcosa but oh let's keep it going test of will this is just a great survivor card you cancel the revelation effect and you exile it as Bryn said earlier, you're going to be at a point pretty quick where, you know, you're looking at your deck and you're like, well, I've added in all the cards I want. What should I spend my experience on? I know. How about these exile effects? And then you just fire them off and you're like, I'm a, I'm a happy, happy dog right now. Chance Encounter. You get to choose an ally with a printed reason cost of X in any, player, in any player's discard pile and put that asset into play under your control. That's right. You too can build the deck where it's all about killing Duke the dog and then you can play him back and kill him again if you wanted. Outside of that, it still could be good for grabbing allies that you want to play and also if Duke does die for any reason, a chance encounter can bring him back. 
True Survivor, you get to return three innate skills from your discard pile to your hand. We have an innate skill on this very uh, page here, which is Inspiring Presence. Uh, Resourceful is another innate skill. Uh, it's a very powerful option, and I think there's some really cool stuff that you can do with it, and it's a nice avenue to take. Newspaper, the upgraded version of the newspaper, as, as Bryn said earlier as well, you have a dog, you got to be able to play fetch with a newspaper, and this is just like um, a very, very nice upgrade for it. Key of Yeast, it's a good card. There's not much more to say. Duke the dog, even though he's not wearing or holding the Key of Yeast, also gets the benefit from Key of Yeast, which is kind of sick. So on to the off-color cards. We have Let Me Handle This. This allows you to take an encounter card that another player has drawn, and you get plus two to each of your skills while resolving that card's revelation effect. This is a really nice option for Ashcan Pete because of the way his stat line is. He is, uh, you use this card and you're going to be at six and five if it's a brain or a foot test. And if it's an enemy that, you know, you don't want your Kluver to get because you're on the other side, you can just bite it with Duke. It's a very nice card for him. Fieldwork is another really nice card with uh, Ashcan Pete. We didn't talk about the compression that Duke provides in terms of his abilities because he deals plus one damage on his bite. So it's basically like, you know, you're using a weapon on his, he's not, he's not discovering an additional clue, but he is moving beforehand. So you are basically like saving some time on, you're like saving move actions. Field work works really well with that because you get to enter a location with clues on it, with Duke's ability because you're investigating. And then you get plus two skill value for the next skill test you perform. It's a really solid level zero option for Ashcan Pete and you should try it out. Logical Reasoning is another uh, secret card. You only can play only if you have a clue. You choose an investigator location that investigator either heals to horror or discards a terror from their threat area. This works well for helping rogues or low uh, brain uh, investigators deal with things like frozen and fear, but you also have low sanity, so this can help you, you know, skirt that. Inspiring Presence, if it's successful, you're ready an ally asset you control your location to heal a damage or a horror from it. Now, if only there was an ally asset in play that we could take advantage of with this card. Oh yeah, Duke the Dog, it works really well there. One last Carcosa card, we got St. Hubert's Key. This gives you Brain and Book at the cost of minus two Sanity. Uh, so, you know, it turns on your Desperate Skills right away. And when you would be defeated by Horror, you can discard St. Hubert's Key to immediately heal to Horror. Really nice card. All right, Travis, into the jungle with you. Yeah, I have a last chance. Um, probably going to run out of cards at some point. This gets you, it lets you pass a test that you really need to pass. Perseverance, again, is those two brain symbols that we like and just don't die when you would. Um, you are like a little part, you do have like a little bit less health and sanity than most investigators, kind of, because eventually Duke does die before you and then you're useless. So you actually have like one less HP and one less sanity than most people or than it would look like. So. Dying blow, really go with Duke, you can, you know, chomp him and then chomp him again, and then if that doesn't kill him, you can invade him with a stunning blow and continue to chip him down next turn. Live and Learn lets you uh, effectively fight or investigate at six with Duke. Plays really well with the fail by cards, like, uh, look what I found. Take Heart's just a solid red economy card. Again, really want that card draw, so. Okay. Yodel is a neat ally to play with Duke because you get to kind of control what's on top of your discard pile and can always be what you need yeah. based on the cards in your hand, um, which makes his ability a lot more consistent. Try and try again. Uh, the skill of cards that you're committing, generally you don't want to lose them, but with base fours, like sometimes you will, and this lets you get, like, rebuy them and try again at some point. Cornered is uh you have to like really put card draw commit to card draw on your deck if you're gonna play this as well yeah um because it turns all your cards into unexpected courages and having two things like wanting to discard two cards a turn can be a little bit tough to keep up with but then we have on your own it's a level three version uh there is a permanent version that we'll look at later it does a very similar thing but basically you can get by with just duke as your only um, ally, and even though he's not actually an ally. Uh, and it pays for your survivor events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice and easy. 
We have Alter Fate, very strong uh, support card for your teammates. Um, very good in certain campaigns. You just get to kill uh, a treachery card for like one resource and a card and no actions basically whenever you want. Mm -hmm. Very good. Tooth Vesley is a solid uh, accessory slot because boost your ramp to five, you flip to four, which, is, which are very, very comfortable stats to have in the Mythos phase. And then it gives you that card draw after yeah. you succeed those tests, which is something that you're kind of desperate for. And finally, we have Premonition, which lets you uh, save some of your high value skills and stuff like that. You can see what token you're going to draw before you commit them. Because again, those. Uh, the four book and four fist you're going to be doing things with can be a little bit tenuous without the stack boosts of some other classes. Yeah, it's also nice to, like, if at the start of the round there's an enemy, you can be like, hey, can I go first and see if maybe I can just bite down on this enemy with Duke? And then you don't even need to commit anything either. It's really nice. There's a lot of flexibility. All right. We're in. Circle undone. All right. We've got evil body. This skill rewards you for not having very many items in play. Duke is, uh, you know, well, lovely, not an item. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, plus three punch or plus three foot is a lot. Should be enough to make you pass just about any one of those tests. Mm -hmm. Or at least, you know, have a reasonable shot at it. We've got the Tennessee Sour Mash. Again, do not share the <laughs> liquor with dog. <laughs> uh, it just won't, it won't be good. Yeah, you don't want to get Duke sick, yeah. do you? No. No, you do not. Uh, Lightning Bolt Exhausted, you get to have plus two brain for a skill test against a treachery card, so it's two guts against treacheries. And then you can discard it to fight at plus three, which is admittedly not so great on Pete because you just get to fight at, you know, five. Mm -hmm. But if you're fighting a three health enemy with a Duke, you can use this instead of discarding a card once it's out of, yeah, you know, go juice. Yeah, yeah. We got the Grizzly Totem. If you're playing a skill heavy deck or committing a lot of cards to tests, this card makes one of those per round one bigger. Mm -hmm. It's just good. We got Drawing Thin. Uh, this card is like really good. Yeah. Um, you can, when initiating a skill test, increase the difficulty of the skill test by two to gain two resources or draw one card. Now, Plus two on you know, Duke probably does mean that you are failing the test. Mm -hmm. However, it's very easy with red cards to generate tests that don't matter or don't take an action or mm -hmm. something like that and just get two money or a card for free. Mm -hmm. We've got the Tennessee Sour Mash upgrade. The difference here is that it costs three XP, costs one less to play, comes with three supplies instead of two, so three guts against the Mythos deck. And as an action, you get the same discard fight at plus three. However, this time, if you succeed, you automatically evade them as well. Which is a, you know, it's a rather strong effect. You can just use this to get away from a guy that Duke couldn't kill. I think this one also, this one, this one doesn't work on elite enemies. Yeah, this, I hate the inconsistency on those kinds of effects. Some yeah, of them work on elite bit, enemies. That is a bit, uh, huh. <laughs> yeah. We've got the upgraded Grizzly Totem, the one we're allowed to play with. Um, this one gives you plus one, and if you fail the skill test, you return the card to your hand. So it's just like, uh, it's like try, try again, and if you want to upgrade a try, try again, just buy these instead. The secret one would be time. really nice. Yeah. For Duke, that'd be amazing. Too bad, too bad. Yeah, the secret one would be crazy if you could play it. Yeah. Uh, we got Fortune or Fate. This one is another one of those, like, what do you spend your XP on? It could be this. This is good. Like, max one per game, you cancel a Doom being placed and then exile the Fortune or Fate. But you don't really care about that. What are you going to buy? Better dog? You don't need better dog. You got Duke. Catastrophe. You catastrophe. It's like a catastrophe, but mm -hmm. different. Um, this one is you play it when you reveal a, a token that would reduce your skill value to zero, uh, including the red token. Mm -hmm. You cancel that token and uh, treat it as though it were as though it were the ready Duke token instead. It's uh, another another thing that you could spend your XP on, and like it wouldn't be a terrible option. Mm -hmm. 
deny existence. Uh, you ever have the game just tell you you have to discard a thing or, you know, heavens forbid, discard an asset and the only asset you have in play is Duke? <laughs> maybe don't do that. Maybe just maybe just don't. It works on just about anything, though, not just, you know, dog nappers. Mm-hmm. Prophesy. This is a skill card that you could feasibly play with. Uh, sometimes it's worse than Unexpected Courage. Sometimes it's notably better. Uh, which will it be? It's That's very scenario dependent. Some scenarios have very large doom thresholds, and this will be active for most of the scenario. And some have several very small ones. Mm-hmm. And uh, this card will be worse in those ones. And then last up here, we've got the Hawkeye folding camera. It's one of the clue staples. There's a link to the video someplace. Um, down there, down there, viewer. Yeah, down in the yeah. description. All right, we're just we're whirring through this just like Ashcan Pete whirs through the first few scenarios of a campaign. On to Dream Eaters. Uh, we have Fortuitous Discovery. This is a two-cost fortune that gets better with the number of um, Fortuitous Discoveries in your discard pile. It's Myriad. So Myriad, if you see it, means you get three copies. And you get plus X book for this investigation. If you succeed, discover, succeed, discover X additional clues to your location, where X is the number of copies of Fortuitous Discovery in your discard pile. So the first one gets you plus one book. Uh, sorry, it's plus zero book, zero additional clues. Second one, one book, one extra clue. Third one, however, two books, two additional clues. Luckily, though, this is some of that discard synergy we were talking about that would come one day. Because you can use this card to discard it from your hand to Ready Duke. And then you don't have to pay for the first ones that kind of just feel like a little bit bad. Really nice card if you want to uh, play with it. Duke would be a great home for it. Scrounger Supplies, it's in the staples. You'll find it there when we talk about, like, why this card is good. Um... It's a good level zero card. I think it does, it probably in Ashcan specifically, it can stay the whole time, uh, which is, which is, you know, nice. Don't need to think too hard. More discard synergy. This was Patrice, right? Patrice was Dream Eaters. That's why there's all this discard synergy now. Uh, the Moonstone is you get plus one brain and plus one foot. You cannot play or commit Moonstone from your hand, but however, after you discard it from your hand, you can play it paying its cost. This is really nice in Ash Campeat. It does compete with the Rabbit's Foot that Travis said earlier because, you know, you're going to be losing the card draw that comes from this. However, this turns you into a 5-4 with your defensive stats, and it also readies Duke in the process, which is a really nice, uh, really nice thing. So, yeah, it's a great accessory slot for Ash Campeat. Glimmer of Hope, another myriad, can only be played from your discard pile and add all copies of Glimmer of Hope in your discard pile to your hand. These cards basically just read... Ready Duke, pay one, draw three more Ready Dukes into your hand. Like, that's what these cards are. It's a very good card uh, if for uh, repeated card draw. This also works really well if you're playing, like, that corner thing because it is just, like, three cards that just you can recur over and over and over again. All right, now we have Miss Doyle, who I almost forgot comes in with three cats, which are, like, the reason you play the card. <laughs> so she soaks for two and two. And after under play, you search your bonded cards, uh, bonded cards like set aside cards for hope, zeal, or auger. Randomly choose one to put in play and shuffle the other two into your deck. When she leaves play, find each of those assets and remove them from the frickin' game. Hope, zeal, and auger all follow a very similar structure. They're fast, and uh, as it enters play, you discard one, the other two if they are in play. Uh, as an action, if it's ready, you can exhaust or discard them to either evade, fight, or investigate. You attempt to evade, fight, or investigate with a base value of 5, and you can also, if you do decide to discard the cat, it automatically is successful, and then if you discarded them, you may shuffle uh, zeal into your, di- uh, sorry, hope, zeal, or auger into your discard pile to put one of the other two from your discard pile into play. So it's like, it's like a spinning wheel of cats <laughs> and they can each give you different things it's really nice with um ash can pete that if you draw a cat you can discard them to then eventually play them out of your discard pile again to ready duke but i know i understand if people don't want to build a deck where they put cats and dogs together i understand it's it seems crazy but it can work jessica hyde 
She is like the uh, less good but still good version of Pete Sylvester. She does it for damage instead of horror, and she gives you fist. And Duke can fight with Jessica. Remember, Duke uses your base value for everything. So that means if there's any stat increases, they go to Duke as well. Nothing left to lose. If you have fewer than five resources, gain until you have five. If you have fewer than five cards in hand, draw until you have five. Remove it from the game. What have we talked about that you want in car in with Ash Can Pete? You want cards in hand, and you I mean resources are like usually always good. Uh, so nothing left to lose does both of those things. Nightmare Bobble is another accessory slot if you want to consider it. You basically just get to cancel three um uh three bad cards, like three three auto fail tokens, and then you just have to shuffle a dream parasite into your deck. Notably, uh I could see there being some sort of rule thing for this, but B Dream Parasite is not a hidden card. <laughs> no, it's a weakness. You can't discard it. It's, not, it's, a, it's a weakness. You can't discard it. I was going to say you can discard it with uh, Duke, but no, it's a weakness, so you can't even do that. But you're going to fail tests. You can just throw these at like a basic um, investigate with Ashcan Pete, and then it's gone. You're going to take a damage and a horror, which comes like it's a thing. But you also might be able to pass these tests too if you are using Duke because you have... Um, you know, survivor cards at your disposal at will. Uh, Nightmare Bobble, though, is just a great card, and it's a staple. We talk about it there. Black Cat, once again, it's okay that cats and dogs can be in a deck together. It'll work. Uh, Black Cat basically turns every, like, every cultist, squid, and elder sign token into really, really nice things. Uh, notably, though, that, um... What Black Cat really does, which is nice for Duke, is that it provides you with a lot more soak because, you know, you don't really have as much of it to go around in Ash Can Pete than you do in other investigators. The off-color card that's notable from Dream Eaters here is the Scroll of Prophecies. This spends a secret, choose an investigator location, that investigator draws three cards, then discards a card from their hand. This is really nice in our good friend Ash Can Pete because it, um... It, you know, gives you cards in hand. And that's really good. All right, Travis, you get you get Innsmouth, the easiest one of them all. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so you can play like a sort of blessed deck with a couple of the other, or a, a survivor blessed deck with a couple of the other cards splashing from other colors. But if you'd like a breakdown of that, go check out the survivor blessed archetype video. Um, for other cards here, we have Barfly Effect, which lets you decide whether you're going to commit a card later um, or commit a card and then pick it up after. Mm -hmm. We have Third Times of Charm, which lets you try and just get a better token. Dig Deep, level 4 is, is like really good, buffing your brain, your foot. Um, gives you basically, you know, plus 2 brain, plus 2 foot, or plus 1 brain, plus 1 foot. At some point during the turn, you'll probably never fail a brain or foot test during the Mythos phase with this. Mm -hmm. Um, Shrine of the Moirai is a nice recursion option. Get back some powerful stuff that you lost, or get back just like piddly things. Mm -hmm. um, supports your teammates too, but you can't get Duke back if he go if he gets uh, discarded as he doesn't have a level. It's true. We have Promised Power and Deep Knowledge, both of which are technically part of the Curse archetype, but uh, they're exceptionally good for Duke. So they're here. Promised Power boosts up to eight on the thing you're trying to do. And then deep knowledge is just a, a dirt cheap way to reload your hand. Um, one thing of note for these though is the curse tokens probably will matter for you more often yeah. than for other investigators though. So uh, I'm just remembering now that he's in the, the the blessed video we talk about, but Jacob Morrison is actually another notable card for Duke because he doesn't ready during the upkeep phase, but you can ready him if you ever don't use Duke twice in a turn. So you actually don't even need to use, like, do Bless Synergy to play around with Jacob Morrison in Ashcan Pete. I, I, pl I played um, Jacob in an Ashcan deck with app with no Bless cards, and I was, like, able to use him, like, four times in a scenario without, like, like without even, like, blinking. So it's another thing that you could do uh, for Ashcan Pete because he can, you know, ready him with his ability. Just remembering yeah, that right point. now, otherwise I would have put him here. All right, Bryn, you'll take the edge of the earth as, as usual. is pretty long, so you take the first half, oh, I'll take right. the second half. Well, we got bandages here. They let you win an ally or 
investigator at your location it takes damage you can spend one of their three supplies to have that investigator heal a damage they get kind of nuts when you start to have more than one of them in the same location uh, but also you know if duke gets hurt do you not want to bandage him you got it sounds kind of like a yeah it sounds kind of like a bad guy thing to do to me yeah you're right <laughs> Poor duke. Got professor william webb he comes in with some secrets and when you successfully investigate, you can spend one of his secrets and exhaust him to get an item from your discard pile back into your hand mm -hmm. instead of discovering the clue. Uh, he is neat. He's kind of like a, you'll know if you want it uh, as an option. We got the upgraded Plucky level three version this one soaks one and three damage must be placed on it before it is placed on you you can put it on the dog instead if you want to uh, or any other allies you might have but this one gives you plus one brain and plus one book which is very solid if you are trying to investigate duke and then you can spend money to get better at those things mm -hmm. uh, we've got fend off this one is fast you play it when a non-elite enemy spawns at your location that enemy attacks you uh, then automatically evade the enemy, nice. attach fend off, and uh, the enemy doesn't ready. This one makes sense as to why it's non-elite, because if you could just do that to the ghoul priest, like, what's even the point? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we got blood will have blood. It's fast. Play after an enemy attacks you. Max one per attack. Damage or horror from this attack cannot be assigned to your ally assets be assigned to other things though uh, and then uh for each point you took from the attack you draw a card cards are important mm -hmm. this is uh, going to be you know probably like the recurring theme here cards are important the rest of it you could do almost anything you want with this guy we got protective gear this could take damage from a blood will have blood because it's not an ally it soaks three and three for four and costs two xp to put in your deck most of the time when you have the option for this, it's just better than bulletproof vest. Mm -hmm. Almost always. As a reaction effect, when you're drawing a hazard treachery, you can deal it one and one to cancel the card's revelation effect. Can be very strong. We've got upgraded Professor William Webb. This guy does is he soaks one more horror, and instead of, like you do the same when you investigate, get an item back from your discard pile, but he does not cancel discovering the clue. Instead, mm -hmm. He also allows you to discover the clue at a connecting location. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Ice Pick 1 and 3. These cards are also very strong for Duke because uh, as a Lightning Bolt, you can exhaust it to get plus 1 skill value during a fight or an investigation attempt. Mm -hmm. And the upgraded one also allows you to, if the attempt is successful, discard it for extra effect on the success, with plus 1 damage for a fight or plus 1 clue for an investigate. Both very strong things. Mm -hmm. Also very good with Professor William Webb from the same cycle. Coincidence? I think not. I think so, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll take the another. Oh, I was on that. No, bro, you know what? You got these. These are nice and simple. All right. We got an unscrupulous loan. This one uh, costs zero. It gives you 10 money and uh, just sits in play. And at the end of the game, if you don't have 10 resources to pay the bank back, they repossess your cardboard box. Um, <laughs> Hey, exile that unscrupulous loan. Yeah, for so it is. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Justin. For Ash can't beat. It's unscrupulous for the bank because this guy. <laughs> he's like, what yeah. can you have to like show that you can pay the loan back? He's like, I got nothing. They're like, it's yours. <laughs> yeah, someone's getting Take fired with that one. Yeah. Yeah. But this card is a little bit of a strange one here because mostly you don't want that. You don't need that many resources. Obviously, you might depending on the deck you've built. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, you could uh, just keep the money, I guess. Mm -hmm. Level we zero, well-connected. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Well-connected is level zero. It's an asset. It exhausts. Yeah, it exhausts! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Bryn's Madhouse, Rich Duke. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did that one already. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, we did it. We did it with David Renfield. Yeah. We did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did. No, you're right. Uh, we got the Precious Mementos, Future, and Former Life. What they do is they cost three, take up your accessory slot, and soak three and three. 
um, you can only play one of them, but it doesn't matter. The collection only has one of each of them. And on both of them, after you fail a skill test by two or more or succeed a skill test by two or more, you can exhaust it to heal one or the other type of damage. The other one does the inverted thing. Mm -hmm. uh, funnily enough, they even change the order of the skill icons on mm -hmm. this card. Yeah. Yeah. I will never not say that about this card. You know, it's been burned into my... You, you got me <laughs> twice with it, and now it's burned into my brain. Every time I see the cards, it repeats in my head, too. Now, we've got the Enchanted Bow, which is an interesting option for a combat peat deck, where you get three charges. It's an, an action you can exhaust it to either use your foot or your brain instead of your punch and fight at plus one of either skill value for the attack. The attack deals plus one damage, just like Duke. And as an additional cost, you may spend one of the charges to target a non-elite enemy at a connecting location. Uh, ignore aloof, because apparently you have to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one, uh, this, card's, this card's neat if that's what you're trying to, like if you're playing a enemy fighting Pete deck. Mm -hmm. It's a cool option for that. Again, also exhausts, which is normally the part of the budgeting the power budget here but uh we don't care about that in this house no you got earthly serenity one and four these come into play with some charges uh, and test brain one for the level one one and zero for the level four and uh if you succeed you may spend a charge by each for each point you succeeded by to heal a horror or a damage off of an investigator at your location this card is kind of like the beginning of the has healing got too good <laughs> era yeah. and lastly here we have scout ahead which is like shortcut only it's not fast you can still only play it during your own turn because that's how events work mm -hmm. and uh you move three times instead of one enemies do not engage you during the movement which is also sometimes very very important sick all right uh i can do the return to and the investigator decks and then we'll just close out this beautiful little dookie goodness all right we got the rabbit's foot the upgraded version for this one it's for each point you fail by you get to search the top x cards of your deck so you can grab the cards you want well definitely not a necessary upgrade for ashcan pete you're gonna have experience to spend and this just makes your card selection better if you're looking for specific cards this obviously would be better but you know it still just gives you cards in hand. The downgraded version of Alter Fate, still just a good card. And if you're trying to like work your way up to it, you can buy this one. It's just no longer fast, and you just choose and discard a play from a uh, play from a non-weakness treachery that's attached to a non-elite enemy, to an elite enemy, not attached to a non-elite enemy. We got it. We got there. Um, I don't know why Alter Fate is like my freaking Achilles heel. I always just. The level three version, the level one version. I always had to ask Travis. Travis, what's the difference? Oh, okay, okay. It's gonna just go right in one ear and out the other. The permanent on your own that Travis uh, hinted that we'd be talking about later. It's exceptional, so it costs six experience, but it's permanent now. So your deck building uh, investigator gains deck building restrictions, no assets that take up an ally slot. And as a reaction, when you play a survivor event, you can exhaust the Druze event's cost by two. This is really nice because it is essentially a build around, and this makes it so you always have it. And Duke doesn't take up the ally slot, so just just remember that Duke's yeah. the free ally. Yeah, I just I just enjoy the idea of putting this in your deck and being like I'm on my own, and people being like, "What about the dog?" And you're like, "Well, I mean, except for the dog, I'm not, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to leave without the dog. The dog. Like, I got to take the dog with me." Um, then we have Nine of Rods, the other Survivor Tarot, and basically when you draw a non-weakness encounter card, you can exhaust it to cancel all cards' effects, shuffle into the encounter deck, then draw another card. Uh, if you don't like the card you see, hey, you probably will hit something you'll have a better, you'll have be happier about seeing, you know, if you draw the other one. Uh, so just an option. And also the tarot effect where it gets put into play if it's in your opening hand. All right. And on to the investigator decks, which are nice and simple. Uh, we have the level zero and the level two version of a test of will. The level zero version, it's you have to test brain three in order to cancel that card's revelation effect. And the level 2 version cancels it, and then you test Brain 3, and if you fail, you exile it. Really nice cards. Really nice cards. And they have, like, a nice, like, progression system. 
with Ashcan Pete's brain, the level two version of this is really nice. Upgraded, look what I found. It's now if you fail a skill test by three or less while investigating. And you discover you get to discover two clues from among your locations and connecting locations. It's a very nice upgrade. Uh, unexpected courage. Uh, it's now a survivor card. How fun. Uh, and if it fails, you get to return it to your hand. Simple. Upgraded lucky is a staple. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. And then we have deja vu. We talked about a bunch of exile cards here. And this is like the exile glue that holds the, um, if you want to build an exile deck. But in between two scenarios of a campaign, reduce the experience cost to, per to repurchase up to three cards that you exiled during the last scenario by one each. So you have to put five experience in right on the get-go. But then after that, all your exile cards are going to just be like free, if not dirt cheap. All right, Travis, we have the deck list here. What are we, what are we looking at for this Ashcan Pete deck? Uh, this is a this is a Duke deck list. We have uh, a pile of skills. Got inspiring presence to ready Duke and heal him if he takes some damage, or power and perception to make sure we can actually do things. And of course, resourceful to get back our good stuff. Uh, we have scrounge for supplies as well in that recursion vein. Get back whatever we really need, as well as the two scavengings. Um, see, it looks like this is actually a kind of a scavenging deck with the the newspapers as well. Yeah, okay. I uh, have Glimmer of Hope. It's a great card for Duke. Fills in that fifth card, or the 25th card, as it were, mm -hmm. uh, because of the awkward five off-color cards. Um, and ensures you always have cards in hand to ready Duke, and then commits for symbols when you need them. Uh, look what I found. Gets you clues, as well as the uh, scavenging newspaper sort of loop that you can also factor a rabbit's foot into if you need to constantly have enough book to investigate properly. Mm -hmm. Pete Sylvester is our ally, ensure we don't have to care about our brain damage and give us that f brain and foot once we upgrade him. Great defensive stats there. Yeah. Scroll Prophecies and Rabbit's Foot both keep our hand nice and full alongside the Glimmer of Hope that shouldn't be an issue between those cards. Um, Tennessee Sour Mash to help out in the Mythos phase in the early parts of the game, early scenarios. And lastly, the field work will... It just makes you better at whatever you're trying to do. Yeah, it's just, just a great card. <laughs> it really is for, for Duke, yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, that is the Ashcan... Well, sorry, the Duke the Dog Expanded Guide. Um, so, yeah, he's a nice, simple investigator where you... Anytime you, you look at an asset and it says uh, exhaust this ax asset, you should try maybe consider it an Ashcan Pete if you want to go a step further than what we got here. Otherwise, we're going to be back in two weeks to talk about Parallel Roland. Wow, fun. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Have a good one. And as always, a GG's.